Hi there, lovely. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole Elisa. I am an intuitive and transformational love coach for amazing women trailblazers from all over the world. Women who are committed to love, women who are ready to have love, and who are ready to own their attractiveness, mind, body, and soul. Why is this important? Because feminine energy or energy and receiving, it needs to be open and we need to feel attractive. Now, attractiveness in all these layers means different things, but I'm not going to go over that a lot in today's video, although I will touch on it. This video is sharing my experience as a black woman when it comes to, number one, feeling beautiful and attracting love. And what was the correlation that I noticed about that? So if you would like to watch this video and to get also my insights on what I believe is important for you to heal, for you, for you to open up your um, love life, your love energy, make sure you watch this video until the very end. I sincerely appreciate all the likes, all the comments that you give to the, to, to the videos. And I invite you to share it with your friends and family members. I remember one time I did this article for um for a online magazine website curly nikki um and i was really touched when i did that back then and i've been feeling really inspired to do certain videos like be very specific about my experience as a black woman when it came to feeling beautiful and also when it comes to attracting love so that you can really use this um i've helped a lot of women from all walks in life from all different ethnicities, like races, everything. And I believe that every woman is beautiful. Every one woman deserves to be loved. Now, with that being said, um, I feel like there's many different energies that impact us as women. And I wanted to share my experience because I grew up in a Latin country, right? Where I grew up not feeling beautiful. I remember the first time that I, like, I let somebody see my, my Afro um, and having them, like, just laugh in my face. It was like a kid, right? Like, it was a couple of kids, like, some of, like, um, good friends. And that really impacted me. I also remember family members doing my hair and complaining and being extremely harsh with it. And I felt like I was somewhat, like, sometimes unlovable, not beautiful enough. I don't know what, what I was feeling, but it was not good, you know? And I remember when I went to a school where I, I was sort of forced to relax my hair. And when I did that, I remember kids laughing at the hairstyle, the hairdo. Um, I was also wondering why I was forced to relax my hair if other kids were allowed to go in braids. I grew up in a very, I think the word is misogynistic, like culture. And if you can relate, let me know in the comment section. So it was very interesting to open up my heart. And this is the thing where I see that a lot of women of color struggle with. It's opening up their heart. Um, I'm going to share why, because some might say, Nicole, I open up my heart all the time. I know. What I'm saying is that it depends on every person, but th there's like a groups, right, of how we respond to certain situations. And some of us might have opened up our hearts from the very beginning. And then we were shocked when kids or young boys or even like adults would make comments about us, about us not being good enough. Um, maybe other women of other races, like being more beautiful than us, like constantly being rated. And as I was growing up in my teenage years, I started to notice like all these maybe articles videos, TV shows that were like, you know, mentioning certain things about, you know, being pretty or beautiful for a black woman, how women, black women like were the least attractive. Imagine how you feel in regards to that, right? That's not, that's not a good thing. And what was unique to me, like in, in that moment, because um, we all have unique experiences within all of this. And I always try to be careful to, to highlight the fact that I'm not grouping everybody in, 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 a, in a, I'm not grouping people like in that way. So for me, 
I felt like I was rejected by people of all races, including my own. And that was the toughest thing to, to see self-hatred within my people. Right. Um, and then wondering like, how should I feel about myself? You know, and at first I resisted it. Even when my mom or my family members were trying to give me advice about how difficult it was going to be for me as a black woman or how I needed to relax my hair so a man would be interested in me. These were all like misguided um, attempts of helping me. But I felt extremely misunderstood, not loved, not heard. And sometimes not valuable. Like I felt like I had to change who I was. I was obsessed with having long hair, even though I had like a split ends of this size. It was just like, oh, maybe if I have long hair, then I'll be loved. Maybe if I, if I show up this way, then I'll be loved. Then, you know, of course, all of these feelings started to bottle up within me. And I started to become angry and upset. Even at that age, I was already experiencing trauma, right? And I was like, trying to express it through anger in a way because I felt like I wasn't heard. I felt like it wasn't fair. And then I, was started, I started to fit into the stereotype of being the angry black woman. So many times did I hear things of like, you know, guys that I was interested in. And when other guys would ask them like, are you into Nicole or this or whatever, I would see guys be like, no, no, no way. Or um, kind of be like, I don't want to be associated with her kind of thing. So imagine that. That was not easy for me at all. Um, when I was like a teenager, I felt depressed. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself. Like I was trying to be rebe rebellious. Um, I didn't even realize that that's what I was doing, but I had a lot of energy in me. So why do I bring this up? Because recently I was talking with one of my um, coaches and she was sharing with me how she was reading this, this statistic about how 60% of black women, like even in their forties were single 60%, right? That's a lot. And it's something that's been in my heart for a while. It's the reason why I started my business and it's been several years now. And I love helping women because I felt when I saw the way that my, like my mom, my, my aunts were treated, something didn't sit right with me. Also that my dad too, don't get me wrong. Like there's something there. And I remember one time somebody told me, Nicole, if you don't work on your love life, like if you don't work on healing, <laughs> when I say the word that's coming through me, like healing your shit, like basically like you're more than like you, like it's the chances of you attracting something similar are like are really high. You need to work on it. And one of the thing, greatest things that I appreciate about my dad, my dad passed away several years ago, but like the biggest, the biggest thing that my dad said to me was Nicole, if you need to do something, you just do it. I used to be called Nicole stress, which I also think it was like a symptom of like trauma, like on process, like wounds, et cetera. And I was always stressing out. I was the overdoer. Um, I was the one that I needed to solve things. Like my parents weren't happy, so I needed to solve it. I needed to be better. I, I had all this charge energy within me because as kids, you don't tend to realize that certain problems are outside of you. Like you internalize them as your own and you try to make yourself better. So my dad had no idea, but I was being called Nicole stress at school. I didn't like it. Um, I was always taking on the problems of others <laughs> um, and helping them shift. Somebody said once to me that even like, oh, our ego, but I don't think it's, it was like my ego, but like we have to find a fine balance between our ego and our soul, like leading us towards our work. But that person said to me, like Nicole, like sometimes our ego leads us to our line of work, but I don't agree with that. Like, I feel like it's our soul. Like I, so I know that my soul led me to do this. I am here to help people as a guiding light to really help them find love, feel beautiful. Um, that's no longer my ego. Like my ego needed to do it, to keep things right in order, maybe in control, but my soul, this is something that I don't let go of because it's what I'm passionate about. Women feeling beautiful, women changing their lives. Um, women, 
being treated right and attracting the love that they truly deserve. So once I heard that from that person, it was like somebody threw a bucket of cold water at me that day. And I just remember what my dad said. My dad had passed away away already. And I was just like, I, I need to go into action. Like I need to find out how, how, how do you get love right? And I know this is a topic that for a lot of people is very personal. Now, there is certain energies that, I'm going to say this, everybody has to get right about love. Like there's certain basics, certain foundations, but we were not all born with those basics or foundations. And there's basics and foundations, but there's also really intricate, subtle, and even potent energies around love that you need to become conscious of. You need to work on because they're ruling your life without you knowing it. Okay. And that is important. Love is not a basic concept. Love is one of the deepest concepts or, you know, energies there is on the planet. It's who we are. So do not take it lightly. Honor it, you know, like have the rev give it the reverence that it deserves. So what's currently happening is that, well, you know, I was able to change things around. I remember there was a time where, you know, my scalp was on fire getting the relaxers, even like the stylist would criticize my hair. She was like, Nicole, you have sort of like ashy hair. Your, your color, like your hair has no color. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was so mad. Um, so one time I just decided that I was going to cut off my hair, but I was going to open up my heart. I remember family members telling me like, you're going to regret it. Like nobody's going to love you. Right? Like these are the things, these are the fears that were passed um, from family member to family member, from generations in my family of the woman needing to turn herself into a pretzel to find love, right? Now, even though I am telling you all of this, my message to you about finding love is not about you turning yourself into a pretzel for a man. It is about you becoming the goddess that you are and doing your inner work no matter what it is so that you have that reverence for yourself on the inside and it shows in your energy field and your energy is open, meaning you are attractive, you're open, you feel desirable at all levels, you trust your energy so much that people come to you naturally. People, the right people, the right men, if you're in, you know, like if you're heterosexual, like it's the right men come to you. And when you don't look at your energy, and you have unprocessed stuff and that you haven't really known how to integrate or integrate it fully, you run the risk of attracting men that are not the right fit for you. It is our duty as women, as black women, as women of all races, to heal whatever it is that is in the way of us being treated right, attracting the love and owning our attractiveness and magnetism. That is our duty. That's our duty to herself. That's self-love. It is so expensive. I was reading another statistic the, the other day about how, the, the, I don't remember it right now. Um, I just decided to come online today and share this, but I was reading like the statistics about, about how many different like, you know, relationships end in divorce. Why are we not like, we need to look more into the area of love. We need to look more into releasing and healing the pain, the wounds. See, this is what, what is happening for a lot of people. And you might not be aware of this, but you, you, when you repress feelings and emotions, more often than not, they, just, they don't just go away. They become a part of your energy and your vibration. They affect how you feel. They affect how you perceive yourself. They affect how you expect others to perceive you or what you expect to happen. And when it comes to matters of love, what you're vibrating, what your energy is saying is way louder than what your words are saying, than your independence, than your bank account statement. You could be the richest woman in the world with a lot of walls, right? You're not allowing love. If you want love, like what a lot of women I, in my personal experience are doing, they're Connecting with coping mechanisms to survive, even though they're wildly successful, 
they're thriving in many areas of their life, they're thriving, thriving in their careers, finances, etc. At what cost? If you feel like it's coming with struggle, if you feel like it's coming with pain, if somewhere in your energy you internalize that pain is to be ex 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 expected, it shouldn't be. Now, suppressing these energies just create walls. I am an intuitive love coach. I've had to do years, years, I would say eight to nine or even 10 years of this work, day after day dedicating to love, to self-esteem, to attraction, and intuition. Truly being in my sovereignty as a person and who I allow in my energy and opening it up, opening up my energy. My goal as a feminine woman is always to open up my energy, to own my sovereignty, to allow more loving to my life. I do not want any sort of fight, any sort of struggle. I do not want to embody um, like life is hard sort of mindset. I do not want to embody keep on the hustling energy. None of those things for me are feminine. None of those things refer to our attractiveness to our capacity to receive in the energy of love. I'm not discrediting if we've had to start with that. Now, how much is it hurting you to keep on the struggle mindset, to keep on, on the energy of having to hustle, um, these things impact what you allow yourself to have. They impact your levels of well-being. They impact so many different things. Obviously, I work hard. You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I work a lot is what I want to say. I am a dedicated person. Um, I have it a lot in my chart, like a lot of Scorpio. So it's like a matter of like dedication. I understand what is dedication to a craft, to a result, right? Now... With that being said, you have to be aware enough of how these narratives are affecting what you let yourself have. So if you are you know, a black woman who wants love, who knows that love is your birthright, there are certain things that I truly do recommend for you to work on. And by the way, um, if you're watching to like up until this moment, I'm excited to have you still here. Make sure you watch this video until the very end. I do have a program that can help you really um, get there. It's opening up. We're having the first bonus call tomorrow. And on Friday, it starts the sessions. It's called Goddess of Love. Here's the thing. We need to do our self-love work or embodiment work about how we expect to be treated. See, we've all been born under different circumstances. We're not responsible for the things that we saw growing up. But if we internalize them, we are responsible as adults to really heal them and let them go. See, there's a lot of generational work in the sense of there's a lot of black women because we tend to be empaths. And this applies to women of all races, of course. We tend to take the pain of our ancestors. When we were talking about pain, even slavery, like this is, this is stuff that if we do not know how to create a different state to our being, right, um, we are carrying a frequency of pain, maybe of sacrifice, of hurt, um, of not being treated right, of tolerating abuse, okay? That's a very interesting thing. So if you find yourself in a space where you are aware that there's an energy of maybe tolerating abuse and you're fighting it and you do not want it, but you want love, but love is not coming to you yet. I'm pretty sure, 99% sure, I want to say 98, but there's, there could be some energies, um, some thought forms that you have around love, around receiving love, um, what you expect from men, um, energies of striving, of, str of struggle, of like um, being in that hustle mode so much that you disregard your femininity, um, dealing maybe with some broken men, right, who cannot deal with your level of success. 
and you know, men have their stuff too as well, but this is a video about women, right? So I honor men completely. Um, so I'm just mentioning some of the things that I'm seeing. When you're doing that, you're still in defense mechanism energy. And as I was saying before, your energy matters. You can be saying through your words that you deserve love or that you're going to attract love or, and yes, but if your energy feels off about it or if it's not working, working to your energy because these emotions in my experience, many years of looking, even looking to people's energies, like I said, as I'm intuitive, I can see people's energy and I can read it. Um, and that's something that I had to study. It's a skill that I had to really build and master. That's why I said it's like, it's important to do this. We all have intuition. The thing about intuition is that when your defense mechanisms are high, you're in survival mode. Doesn't matter how successful you are. You could be a billionaire right now watching this video. Like if you're in survival mode, that energy wears you down. And a lot of people confuse intuition with their defense mechanisms. They're not the same. You're not. It requires a willingness to learn your craft, to study, um, to open up your energy, to, to allow yourself to receive and to even be a student in many cases. A student to God, life, the universe, to open up, to be in relationship with things, like with people, to be able to read energy effectively. So when you're in your defense mechanisms, um, the energy tends to wear you down, okay? And as I was saying before, your energy matters. Your energy speaks louder than whatever it is that you're saying verbally. These defense mechanisms are energies that are stuck in time, right? They're fearful of what they perceived in the past and they're fearful of the future. Um, so if you find yourself feeling stuck in your love life, it's because that energy is still stuck and it's probably leading your steps and your choices. You need to act. You need to work on it um, because these things affect what you're sending out in your energy. One of the things that I um, channeled and I received intuitively before this video that I felt like my angels were trying to tell me to share with you um, and in general for the message is that a lot of women tend to carry their defense mechanisms in their weight. I know for sure when I felt unsafe, I started to gain a lot of weight because I didn't feel safe around people. I felt like I was going to be attacked. So I want you to really get something. Your energy is communicating with each other at a soul level, at a spirit level, at a mind level, at a body level, at a heart level, uh, at a sacral chakra. Like, like you're always communicating and they're sending out messages in the background and you are just sometimes operating through what your conscious mind is saying. But have you ever watched that movie? There's a movie, there's a caricature um, movie that talks about like these sort of emotions controlling how you show up in any given day, like as a kid. I'm not gonna mention the name of the movie because I'm not sure like, you know, a lot of the details in regards to mentioning these things and videos like this. So, but I'm sure you know, uh, that's sort of like what's happening. As I looked into a lot of people's energies, sometimes they're like, Nicole, I've done so much for love. But when I look into their energy, like they're really dedicated, like they're really dedicated, like they're about to give up, they're crying to me on the phone, like on a first call, they're like, I don't know what I'm going to do, like it's not working. I, like when I look, really look at, into their energy, that person is still in protection mode. And somewhere in their energy, sometimes they're saying that they don't want love, they don't feel safe having love. But love is who you are. Love is the safest thing there is. What is not to trust like to give yourself fully to somebody's ego, right? Like what creates chaos in relationships? It's not love, it's ego. It's a survival version in us. So you get to start trusting love fully. You need to have a proper embodiment of love that is safe for you to be loved, that you deserve to be appreciated, to really open up your energy, to open up your intuition so that you can know who to trust if it's a good man or not. But these defense mechanisms, they sort of blind you, right? They can blind you just focusing with work or you're building your empire, or they can blind you to the point where a guy comes in, the guy's, I hear, I hear the guy's a creep, 
and you're not picking up on it because you're operating from your ego and a need for survival or just to, you know, make a relationship work because you're reaching a certain age. Like you're reaching, like, I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're reaching a specific age, like 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is. Um, and you're like in freak out. No, this is about honoring yourself. The sooner you start, the better do your work. Okay. Do your work. It's so important. Um, I remember working with a client once where she was doing everything to track love. She was going on websites, wasn't working. Guys were not paying attention to her. She was in protection. We started to work on it. She started out of nowhere, started losing weight. I remember when I was doing this work for myself, I don't know where, like in a month, there was a month where I lost like 15 pounds, not working out because I had to work on feeling safe again. Right? So it's very interesting. Our energies, and our bodies are communicating something on the background. We need to deal with this because you could be carrying the pain of your mother, your grandmother without knowing it, reliving their pain, reliving their story, reliving their trauma. So the main areas that you need to work on, my recommendation is owning your attractiveness, feeling safe with that, um, allowing uh, your energy around men and what you expect and how you deserve to be treated. And what you allow yourself to receive and what are the implications of you receiving, et cetera. But you get to allow yourself to receive more, be more, um, like receive love. I like to call it like transcending time and space energy so that you radiate and you shine no matter what. Um, and you give yourself the peace and the longing and the love that you truly deserve. I wanted to really bring this up because I know what it is like to be slighted, to not, to be not considered good enough, to having that completely change around the moment that I truly worked on my energy. Okay. It wasn't just physical steps. It wasn't just about reading the books. It was about regulating and aligning my energy to an energy of love of worthiness, of deservedness, of allowing and expecting true love to be there. Feminine energy is about embodiment. So if on one end you're saying like, I'm all this, right? Which you are, you are. At the same time, you are like struggle, but I'm afraid, but this or the other. You're sending out mixed messages to the universe. Fear, you wanna send a true, message of confidence and readiness. Don't you want to know how to truly assess if somebody is the right fit for you before you get into a relationship? Before you get married? You have that power within you. You really do. Now, if you would like to know more videos, if you'd like to hear more videos about from me from this topic, please let me know. Um, I just want people, I want women to be treated right, uh, to be treated like the goddesses that we really are. And if you would like to know more about goddess of love, goddess of love is my signature. I'm saying signature. It is, it's my signature love coaching program, my program of attractiveness of helping you open up your energy, your field, um, where you're sending this energy of like, I am attractive, I am lovable, um, I deserve love. And I allow myself to have it while also attracting a really like healthy, like here, sort of glorious love, like what you truly deserve. Um, it's a seven month program. It's really, um, it's really not intense. It's really intimate for you to have the love that you want. Um, and you get to work with me. Like it's, it's, it's very in depth. If you want to know more about it, I'm going to put a link there. It's my invitation only. So it's, it's an assessment call where we discuss if it's the right fit for you. If not, I have other programs that I can share with you. Um, I would love to have you be part of the program and the program, like I said, is starting. We have a first bonus call tomorrow and, or mm, I might upload this tomorrow. So, um, we have the first bonus call tomorrow and then on Friday we start and it's, it's the best program out there because we're really going to dive in deep on the different layers when it comes to this topic. And yes, I would love to have you. If you have any sort of questions for me, let me know. Please share this video with your friends and family members. Uh, you have to act. I'm going to say this. You have to act. You have to act. Um, nobody else can do it for you. I'm grateful that my flight or flight 
led me to act. It was like, I need to run, but run towards what I want, <laughs> right? Um, not in an, in an impulsive way, but like, I need to be dedicated to my craft, right? Uh, and that's why I've been able to help so many women find love and, but more importantly, truly be masters of their own energy and their feminine embodiment because we're all worthy of being loved for who we are. All right, ladies, it's been a pleasure. And if you have any sort of comments or questions, please let me know. The link is going to be below. I would love to have you be part of Goddess of Love.